how can I bulk import contacts? I have created this template. It's based on what KB Core already provides, but I just tried to make it a little more clear. It's it basically a template you can follow to import your lead. So what, what, what the heck am I talking about? So let's say you have an old database, you know, you used contactually before you used follow up boss before you used sync before you used realty juggler before, or you never really had a database like that, but you have in an Excel spreadsheet or you don't, you just have like, you know, written on a piece of paper and now you want to start putting contacts in a database. Um, or you just have a bunch of business cards, whatever the case may be, um, you're going to make sure these all these leads are in some sort of spreadsheet, whether it's an Excel spreadsheet, um, a CSV file, you know, a numbers file from Mac, whatever. Google Sheets here under Lead Engine in KB Core, you're going to go to Bulk Import. Click on Get Started. And it actually has a option to submit a file so that they will actually import the leads for you, or you could do it yourself. And so you can click, watch the little video. It'll teach you, you can click here to learn more about importing leads. And there's a good little article here. It's got tips for Canadian users um, because they have a kind of a, a different maybe template a little bit in a slightly different format. And so more information about that is here. What I did is I took that information and I put it in this file. So this notes section here, I tell you exactly what to do. You can download the template or you can just make a copy of it by going to file, make a copy, and then save it to your own Google Drive with your Gmail account and it'll be in your Google Drive and then you'll be able to edit it and save it and keep it and work with it, okay? And then I've got this link to so that same article I just showed you is linked here about from that support article about importing your leads and such um, directions from KB Core. And then I've got some directions for you about the columns here. So here's all these different columns. And I say, hey, you can delete any of these unused columns. You can also rearrange the columns, but these headers, those headers have to have those header names in that way in order for it to work, okay? For status, I have a little drop down here for you. So these are the statuses that are available. You can only choose one. Hashtags, you can add hashtags ahead of time. So maybe you've got a lot of past clients. Past client could be a hashtag. You know, they use here in these examples, and I did get this part, these examples from KB Core, like I probably wouldn't use a lot of hyphens. I would just do cash buyer altogether. <laughs> the hashtags can be anything. They must be separated with a little separator symbol that you'll be able to find on your key keyboard. Um, don't use any spaces and don't use the actual hashtag symbol, but you can use as many as you want. So like I could have in here, pass client, and then the separator. Maybe they're also a family member, family, <laughs> okay? And um, I already sent them my calendar from last fall or last winter, so last holiday, so I'm gonna say calendar 2020. I just sent them my calendar. You know, I know all these things about them. Deal types, the types being like whether they're a buyer, a renter, a vendor. Now, these are all the types there are, buyer, seller, renter, agent, vendor, that's it. But you can do multiple types. So you can have, somebody can be a buyer and a renter. Some, somebody can be a buyer and a seller. Does that mean they're doing business right now with you? No, not necessarily. Um, so just be aware they can be multiple. So at the beginning of the session, when we talked about your contact status and lead types, we talked about this, you, the agent email in KB Core. So whatever your email is in KB Core, that's what you're going to put in there. And how do you know what it is? Well, you can go to your profile and go to my drop down menu. There's my email right there. So that's the one that I want to make sure shows right there. Home phone number, if there is one or a second phone. It doesn't have to be a home phone landline. It can just be another mobile phone. This part where this these um, opt-ins, remember when we were talking about when you add a contact, it ha you had to enable permissions like opt-in for the email, yes. Um, I have permission to text them, yes. I have permission to call them, yes. It, you have to actually include that in this document in order for those 
to be enabled, for those permissions to be enabled in the system. And so to enable them, they have to be on true. It has to be on every single one. So right now I have phone on, it says false in this example. That means when this is uploaded, I will not be able to call the person from my system if it says false, okay? So you have to enable the permissions and you want, if you want them to be enabled, they have to all say true. Primary address, usually this means where they're, they reside or their mailing address is really what the primary address is, the mailing address. Last closing date, if you have that, um, if they're past client, and then you can put the spouse's information. But remember what I said, if you want that spouse to also get uh, communications from you, in addition, you want to actually create a whole new lead contact for them, their email address, their the spouse's phone number, or a third phone number. And you can have search alerts start, but the trick is it has to be an area. And usually this means a city or a zip code. And the, the kind of the downer, in my opinion, is you also have to have a price. So like you would put their max price so that the search alert would actually start. So I want so-and-so to start getting, you know, all the listings in their zip code starting now, you know, they can do that, but you have to put a price in there in order for this to work. When you're actually setting up a search alert by hand, you don't have to have a price range. It can just be an area only. All this minimum square foot stuff, you can just skip unless you have that information. And then you can also add agent notes, like maybe where that lead came from or whatever, and then their birthday. And then I've got a note here. It has to be in that specific format. And you do not have to know the year you know, you can put, you know, they were born March 1st in 2020. <laughs> it's fine. You don't need to know what year they were born, but you do have to have a year. And so anyway, once you get this file all prepared, you have to download it as a comma separated value sheet CSV file. But before you would do that, you would make sure this whole note section was deleted because you're not going to import that into KV Corp. You need to get rid of that. And then you're going to um, export it as a CSV file. And then you're, once you have that file, then you're going to go ahead and upload it. So you, here it says, do it yourself, get started. You're going to browse for your file on that and then upload it. Another thing I want to uh, mention, just because people have asked like, hey, um, how do I export my leads? The easiest way, like, Let's say you're going to be switching CRMs. You're not going to use KB Core anymore for some reason. You want to export all that data, you know, more actions, and then export contacts. It's going to have everybody in here. And so if I want to do that, I just say export, and then a file download is going to be emailed to you. And it happens pretty quickly in a few minutes. So that's how you can export it. But you can also create a filter um, of a certain you know, group of contacts. So that's one way to do it. Another way to do it really briefly I'm just going to mention, if you go to Marketplace and you find API Nation, Google Sheets, I think it's $5 a month. Um, every time you get new leads, you can set it up so that periodically, once a day or whatever, all your lead contact information, uh, information will just be sent to a Google Sheet that you have in your Google Drive automatically. So it'll just already be in there and you'll always have them. So there's options.